Well, hello there. Here we are in a fancy bar cabinet. And I'm going to show you how I made this. So as you saw in the last two clips, uh, actually three clips, all I've done is rip down my sheets of three quarter inch maple plywood down to size. Uh, the backing is 39 and a quarter by 39 and a quarter. And then the side pieces here are going to be 15 and a quarter deep and then 39 and a quarter tall. Now what we are going to do is put some pocket holes in our backing in order to connect to our sides. as well as this Bessie clamp for our middle screws and second screws. I'm going to fill those in with some stain so they're not as noticeable. Next, what we have to do is create all of our shelving units on the inside. sense now but I promise it's going to once we get these all assembled so while I let this dry for now um, the next step that you will see is me making pocket holes in the shelves themselves as well as our dividers and then we're gonna get this all assembled and into our carcass all right so what we are gonna be doing next is the design for this has two outer shelves actually two on each side so four shelves in total on the outside these are about be about four inches thick and we are gonna cut those now. I had to switch to the iPhone because my camera battery died, but so we have our outside shelves cut and stained and sanded, obviously. These are four inches wide again, and then you can see I put pocket holes on the bottoms to get them attached in to the side. Now we are gonna do our slats for the siding on the outside, which may sound confusing, but I promise it won't be once I'm done with it. And I'm simply gonna be using brad nails to secure these side slats to the cabinet. So you'll see me when I'm done doing that. So as you can see, we now have the siding in, which is done in a slat way on both sides. And again, I just used my brad nailer, punch those in. And so what I'll do next probably, besides cut the countertop now, I'm going to um, fill all the pocket holes that are visible and I'm gonna fill all the siding pieces with wood putty and then we'll get those sanded and stained. All right, so as you can see here, we have our counter, countertop cut and stained and secured. I already went through and filled all the brand nails with wood putty. And then... All right, so as you can see, this is the back side of the door. we're gonna obviously have to do is assemble this and so we're gonna see a time lapse of that and I'll explain it to you in the next clip all right so as you can see shaker door one is now done bada boom bada bing there it is and just real quick to review the process. As you saw, I started in uh, one of the corners of the outer frame here, secured those. I then went to the opposite side, secured the pocket holes down there. So then I took a piece of quarter inch plywood to slide it underneath this half inch panel here in order to bring it level with our frame. And that's the process I, you saw me do all throughout so that this is level with the back piece right here. So now door one is done. We need to make door two and you'll see me after it's done. All right, guys, so we have done a little bit. Obviously, you can see here are our doors. They are all nice and stained on the back side and the front. You'll have to take my word on the front for now. And the next thing we also did was if you will look right here, before you can see we had our uh, pocket holes exposed, we used our wood plugs, glued, up, glued them up in there, and used a jack. Really flush right here. As you can see, that 
that's much better than staring at a big hole in your pieces of cabinet. So I did all of that, sanded um, any remaining bit left from the plug, and then I just simply stained over it. So that is what we did on the inside here again, as well as, gotta show all the details, uh, our back piece here. So now it looks like very one solid piece of material. The next thing we're gonna do is hang these doors and we're gonna be using our Craig uh, Conceal Hinge Jig. I've never used this before, clearly. I uh, bought this a couple months back, but I knew it'd be a good investment because I was gonna be making more cabinet pieces. So, all right, so as you can see, we got door number one on there. I did that to make sure that my process is right. Is it right? I'm not sure, but this is what worked for me. So I'm gonna just take you through the steps. Uh, each of your hinges that you buy should come with instructions. Here are mine. This is just a template for the hinge that's gonna go in your cabinet. And I'll really tape it there, and I'm gonna use a 1 16th inch drill bit and use and drill into the pre-marked holes that are on this template. So that is step one. All right, so obviously we have our mounts on for our hinge. Now we need to cut out our hole for our hinge. And you're just gonna simply use this Craig jig right here. Uh, this has all your measurements on the top. Here is your stop for the depth that you need for your wood. Um, I used a scrap piece that I used to cut out all the framing for this and adjusted these knobs out here until I found the perfect depth for these doors. So that would be my advice. Um, yeah, you can just kind of tool around. You just use a flathead screwdriver in there to adjust until you're at the perfect, perfect depth that your manufacturer's hinge says to be at. And then you just line it up and simply drill it up. So let's do that. All right, so once you're done drilling your hinge holes, uh, double check to make sure they're perfectly flush all the way to the bottom, especially if you're not on a, working on an even surface. And then the next thing that's pretty cool is once, once you pop out the drill cup, if you can see here, there's little tiny holes, and these holes, you use the 1 16th drill bit again, and you just punch through the holes, and that's actually where the screws for the hinge go on the door itself. So, really nice little feature there. That, this is my first time using this product from Craig. Obviously bought it myself, and I really like it. I've worked with hinges before. I hate doing hinges, but this makes it way better and easier. So, 12 out of 10 would recommend. Alright guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget we used 3 quarter inch maple plywood for all of the carcass and the shelving. We used 1x4 uh, pine as our outer boards for our slats and as well as our door frames on our shaker cabinet doors. And we used half inch sand ply for the panel on the inside of those shaker cabinet doors. If you have any other questions, please let me know down below. If you want me to go in depth on anything else, please let me know down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day or night. Don't forget to keep God number one. God bless.